Beans. Beans. Hey, brother. Beans. Beanie. <laughs> beans, beans, magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you... Two. <laughs> Miss Glory. Hey, that's There was why. like eight different changes in pressure yesterday. <laughs> And none of them were in your calf launcher. Nothing. I know you hear me. That's why your ears are forward. Yeah. I know. Beans. That's, yeah, I'd go the other way. Uh oh. Well, Beans is stuck. Babe, go save him. Oh no. <laughs> Poor baby. He's out. Did he get around the water? Yeah, yeah, he's out. Morning, everybody. Chad, Ray, Adler, Doss Farms. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> All right. No way, I can see. We truly, <laughs> we truly did survive the storm. Like everybody made it. Everybody's accounted for. What was it like? Seven thirty when Tim. From Tice Excavation, I'll link him down below. That's when he shut his machine off and he was like, Yeah, it's done. I gotta get out of here. I know, it's like. Seven thirty last night. And by seven forty six, eighty mile an hour straight line winds. Now today we're out here making tracks. I guess we should scoot over. <laughs> look at them. They're, look at look at all the people in the camera right here. They're all tricking. They're all trying to look back here and to get sneak peeks. Do you see them all? You understand what Daddy's saying? Or am I being weird? I thought so. <laughs> but look. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Here's what we're gonna do first. Oh look, they're all coming. I was actually gonna go check the fence lines with the cows are coming. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Woo! Ray, guess what I do? Bye bye. Um, you should, maybe it's enough filming the cows and you should film my dad a little. Because <laughs> that's sometimes what I do. Yeah, you're right. So this is sweet feed. It's a little harder, a little harder for them to, uh, a little harder for them to get up off the ground, but it's all right. They've got two bales of hay yesterday. And I do this every now and then just so I can see them a little longer and a little closer. That's why I pour it in piles more than spreading it out like cake. Everybody looks pretty good, all things considered. Here comes a little donk. Come here, buddy. What's it doing, man? What's it doing, huh? It's all right. She don't like you, does she? What'd you do to her baby? Did you chase honey? Beans. What's up, man? Doing all right? Hmm? <laughs> but no change from Miss Glory. Which is pretty crazy. We do have a bag though, pretty significant one. That's what we know. Let's take them to see the, uh, hang on. It doesn't look clear if you aim the camera that way yet. I know. But it is, it's very clear. Let's drive over there. So this is the very back of the pasture, as you guys know it, for the last little over six months. 
you haven't been following along, we called our friend Tim Tice from Tice Excavation. So this pasture behind us that you guys have seen is 660 feet wide by about 750 long. So right where we're sitting is halfway into our property. And we're about to show you something we've really not even been able to access up until this week. And it's pretty stinking cool. He even fixed the hill for us a little bit because it was pretty bad. So check this out. Those kangaroos? I thought it was kangaroos, okay? Well, now they've seen it, I can't hide it. But yeah, look at this. Check this out. Wow. That's a shooting lane if I've ever seen one. Wow. You know what a shooting lane is, right? Yeah. Okay, your daddy would be proud. I For know. many reasons, but he's I proud know. of that. Bunch of space for horse flies to get in. That's probably right. But look at that. Now you can't quite, because of the lay of the land, you cannot see all the way down because there's a hill. We'll drive all the way down there. But yeah, 660 feet. It's like uh, two and a half football fields, just shy of it. And then it's 660 feet that way to the other side. So we get our boy Jeremiah in here to fence this. And oh my goodness. Talk about having more to eat and a lot a lot more room to move so for reference and we didn't have him clean a lane right here because we're going to have cows on both sides like we'll eventually when this is all fenced off we'll leave this gate open we didn't have him clear this it's actually not that bad like there's no major trees in the way because when jeremiah came through he cleared both sides of it so what you're seeing is just overgrowth when we get cows on both sides i would imagine we'll be able to drive through there i'll show you here in a minute i actually with my lane shark cleared a path that way already but if you follow that it goes straight to Ray's meadow it's really pretty look at this oh my goodness There's so much room for activity he also cleared this wide enough that heaven forbid we have a fire break if something ever happens inside of our property so this is the neighbor's property this is ours he didn't quite clear into hers, like our property line. It's not like it's right down the middle. Our property is like over here. Actually, is there a T-post up there? There it is. Hey, kinda, but you can see how close the property is to the trees. He barely cleared on her side, but she's aware. We're not worried about that. I was just trying to explain to you. It's not gonna run right down the middle. It'll be over here. But, oh, there's everybody's favorite flower. What was it? Close. Fossils. Thistle. Thistle. That is close. Though. That's very close. And what happens when you have too many thistles? Um. When they take over a pasture, what happens? Flowers come everywhere and your cows can't eat since the flowers are too tall. Yep, they'll take over, won't they? But you can see right here, look at there. I cut us a path all the way to Ray's Meadow. It kind of winds through there, it's really pretty. And part of the reason we didn't want to just totally clear this is we would wind up with these dozer piles and there'd be a lot of them. And we also, there is vegetation in there, but that track loader that he's using, this is what it does to the earth when he drives over it. So if we were to clear this and completely wipe it, it would look like this and it's very rocky. So that's... Like, this, if it compared to the dirt that Brian had. For sure, yeah. Well, and so here in a minute, we'll get down to that bottom area where you started. Yeah. And you'll see the difference in the dirt. This is a rocky hill. It's always been that way. It's always going to be that way. We'll never, yeah, it'll be very, very difficult to have a true hay field out here. So what we wanted to do, which you guys have advised and agreed with, we cleared our fence rows and now we can let the cows come in here and eat whatever they want to eat. 
But guess what this is? That's the corner of the property. A true story. Remember, there was a actual tree on the pin yeah. back here. That was crazy. What are the odds? Okay, you ready to see the next? So, that's where we came from. You can see there's a pretty big hill. And this goes all the way to Ray's pasture. Way over there. So if you've been watching DOS Outdoors, you've seen some of this cleared right here, but these dozer piles are not that bad. There's one about every 100 yards, which roughly is obviously 300 feet. So when the guy surveyed the property, like when we had it surveyed before we bought it, or I guess when we bought it, he showed up a couple days after we bought it. When they surveyed it, we paid for what's called quartering, and they put a stake every 330 feet. That's one of them right there, actually. So every stake, there's a dozer pile. But what's that thing called, a four-in-one bucket? Where he can articulate the mouth of the bucket. I think it's a four-in-one. Yeah, yeah. So what he does is he doesn't just push the trees out and throw them in a pile, and then you've got this massive pile you can't do anything with. He actually picks the bucket. Like, he can articulate the mouth of the bucket like a grapple, pick the trees up, and then stack them. So then if we want that firewood, all we have to do is come out here, and let's say out of a, I don't know, a 30-foot tree, 10 of it is firewood worthy. We can raise eyes are reacting to the pollen and the dust. She's not crying. Every time I walk outside. Every time she comes outside. I'm surprised the little man's not doing it yet, but oh here we go. <laughs> he had his allergy medicine this morning. He did. He had some <laughs> allergy medicine. If we want to come out here, we can just cut like, you know, 10 feet off of that log. We can pull it out with my tractor. More than capable. And then of course from our friends at Champion, we have a log splitter. From our friends at Woodland Mills, we have a stump grinder. And we're looking into a wood chipper. We are. A lot of you guys have been telling us to look into a wood chipper. Yes. So Any. we think that's going to happen because we know that that organic matter is great for like low spots and things like that. Yeah. Good. But when everything dies this fall and winter and stuff, like Chad and I will come out here and cut up these Absolutely. piles. Absolutely. It's not wasted firewood. Well, like, we'll no slowly means. burn them what doesn't what we don't need and things like that but we'll use we'll use this one so this is one of the paths right here that'll also take you down to raise meadow actually you know if you follow this like it's not a straight line but if you follow that it'll take you all the way to the house unobstructed that's cool yeah. and this is i mean basically we're uh 330 feet off of the back corner and if you take this line right here that'll take you all the way to the house we actually did clear a huge spot for the backyard. Huge. Like, I can actually measure it with my app. I haven't done it yet, but it's at least two or three acres. Let's just, let me put it this way. I'm very grateful for Yakta now because we're going to need it. I'm excited. Yeah, Ray's so excited. She wants to mow, and I'm like, it's my mower. We're going to pop down this hill, and we're going to come out next to Ray's pasture which he cleared us a lane for so we can drive it now and yeah just so I'm less talking more driving right the tactical scene for a vision is a scene Now we can safely all winter long come out here and check our fence lines as well. Won't have any issues, especially with this Can Am. When we That's the same one. Yeah. Wait, Adler, look. It's not a bone. But look right here. Did that? Maybe like a fox or something. Yeah. What if? It looks more like a coon. What if this property? The big one. What if this property though was was actually left behind when dinosaurs were alive, and that was a baby um uh pterodactyl that didn't know how to fly yet. Well, hopefully. 
hopefully it learned how to fly because it's not here, right? Or a baby T Rex. Yeah. Well, they they go extinct, so. Yep. We think they're extinct. We don't actually know. Did you know that? Oh. Everybody thinks dinosaurs are extinct. Don't go. Don't don't send me down that rabbit hole. Okay. I've done it at 4 a.m. many times. <laughs> I wake up early for no reason. It's part of being old. I don't know what's wrong. So this, that's the back. This is the back of Ray's pasture. We're just gonna bring the fence like right here. Cause as you guys know, the creek floods and this isn't that much space right here to lose like at all. That creek is also a highway for deer. So food plot, that, that's, that's what needs to go back there. Yeah. Then I don't have to worry about them bedding down because they can bed down on our neighbor's 800 or they can bed down on the other neighbor who's like 300 and then we don't have to worry about it. We just raise cows and wait till the deer come in here to get a drinky drink. He did also fix our little creek bed there. It kind of gotten clogged. So he fixed it. Oh look, he, it, well it is. It actually had water in it when we came down here, well, sitting water. Yeah, so I don't know if it's because it was low or if it maybe trickled when we had those flash floods. Yeah. Which is probably more likely because... Wait, what's a flash flood? That's when it rains really hard after it hasn't for a while. And the ground is so solid and so dense that the water can't soak in. So it just runs across the earth. And that's when we have water in that creek right there. Oh, look, he also left a bridge. See that big log? Yeah. See daddy's camera? That goes over the creek. So if there's animals that can't get over the creek, they have a bridge. Yes, so this tree, I had him leave for obvious reasons. The house is right up there for reference. I don't think you guys have been back here very much because we haven't been able to get back here. That's the thing, we felt like we had so much land we couldn't even use. This tree right here is stinking cool, man. Look at this. So, not that this one isn't, and it's massive. Two grew into one for sure. But look at this. Here. Look at daddy's camera. Wait, let's turn the... Are you trying to show so them that little like home thing in that tree? Yes. Somebody. So look. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Watching daddy's camera. So there's a hole right there. And obviously stuff runs out of it, like water or sap or something did once upon a time. Why does it feel like Garfield lives in there? It could. And then there's another hole right there. And then there's another hole right there. That's a whole home, man. Bunch of animals living in there. How cool is that? We're not supposed to drive up here. Well, if you hit a bump, it can shut. So you don't want to, you just don't want to go fast. We're, we're not, we're barely going at the speed of a walk. Yeah, we haven't been able to get up here without like dodging a bunch of trees. So this is pretty cool. And we're probably going to need low gear. Hold on. Oh man, I don't think they're ready. Oh my gosh. I don't think they're ready. Adler, look at that. What do you think? Wait, they're the cute little tree. I know, I told him to leave it. I can't believe you did that. Yep. It's very impressive. Do you like it? What do you think? Oh, I do know that I see the pool. I should show you all So we got all the trees out of our view, except for a couple. They're too close to the fence. What'd you say? Pretty, it? What'd you say? I said the house looks so pretty from this view. I know. I was thinking the same thing. So there's the hill that we mow. It's really the only one. But look at that. How cool is that? So we're going to run a fence from the pink post all the way to the cows, black post. There's going to be a fence. And they're not gonna have all of this because we want a yard. This is a great place for a garden. This is a great place for a chicken coop where it's close and we can keep an eye on it. And 
Yeah, it's got power and water so we can keep them safer. Actually, we've got a coop over there in raised pasture and I can pick it up with my tractor and bring it over here and then we'll fortify it. So, but look at this. How cool is that? Look at the little cedar tree he left. That's very impressive. So there's a lot of rocks up here. He's got to work on a lot of this. That's our biggest dozer pile. But you know what I like about it though? Is it is the closest. So like we can come back here and work. You okay? <laughs> you hit the bill of your hat. We can come back here and work and not be like, you know, cause like we're not, it's not that we don't care about the piles in the back, but they're much smaller. Yeah guys, you know what's the best place to find mounds? Right here? Robert. Yeah. So, well, not right now, it's really muddy. It's crazy, that's the hill we used to drop down. There used to be a big tree right here. Now it's in that pile. It was dangerous, it was dead, there was no point. But all of this, we can actually sit on our back porch and see the cows. Here, we'll look the other way, I'll show you. It's still pretty rough. He was going over it yesterday when the storm hit. So it'll get better. I took that camera down, it didn't fall. But yeah, we're very, very pleased. All right, I shut the engine off for the full effect and the quietness. Should I do it, Adler? Do what? Are they ready? The gate is right behind us. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. 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 Like a beautiful white toilet. Yeah, nobody wants a brown toilet. That means three little boys live there. Hey, what do you say? How do you go? Wow. Wow. Look at that. We're going to take, where's it at? That tree down right there. Nope. Is that it? Yeah, that's outside the fence. And that tree down. And then there's a couple in the fence that we'll actually have to call somebody to come get because there's just no way to do it safely. But like, like, listen, in them straight line winds last night though, if that tree didn't come down, it ain't coming down. I got, <laughs> I mean, because honestly, if something, if it, if 80 miles an hour doesn't take that tree down and doesn't hurt the house, anything that would, anything that would, would hurt the house. So it's kind of like, meh. Yeah. Just leave it. Plus the wind comes from the other side of those trees. So if they did blow over, they would just, take out the fence but I think we're leaving those two by the garage right these two? Oh no those two need to go those two definitely need to go but they're literally leaning towards the house yeah but yeah man you guys haven't even seen the back side of the house it's almost been impossible to show you I mean look we ever got the chimney chase how cool is that mm -hmm. which by the way they inspect that with a drone I thought that was really cool so like when the guy came out and serviced it after we closed what are those called? Outriggers? Is that what holds those down? I have no idea. I haven't had a chimney that tall, so I didn't have to have them. <laughs> but yeah, my oh. favorite thing is this gate over here. Yeah, I was going to say. That's wide open. Between so Between the fence and our lean-to now is clear. Yep. Disregard this trash pile. That's part of the old deck. And then, of course, his dozer or track loader, is not, it's, it's huge. I mean, you can see it compared to my tractor, and that tractor weighs 4,000 pounds. Actually, the track loader is 40,000, he said. So, we can now, if you saw our video where we were moving donkeys, and I had to maneuver that little trailer in there, and it was a pretty big nightmare, now I don't have to worry about that. Hey, see that green gate right there? Mm -hmm. yep. That's the original gate. You know where that's at? That's leaning up against G-Dub's fence. We can see all the way to the oh, that's crazy. neighbors right there. There's literally nothing. But wait, there's more. You haven't even seen the craziest transformation. And oddly enough, July 26th, I decided I was tired of looking at a few trees and I took down all that I could safely. 
in the front of the house. And then I had to stop just because you had to have a machine to take the ones down that were remaining. But I took a picture before we touched it. So this is a good spot to show you now that we can drive right through here. There's the back of the house. Still need to bring some material in here because obviously it holds water. But I've actually gotten stuck here before. But look at this, look, look at it. Okay, so you guys have seen the front porch. And here's a picture taken from the exact same spot, July 26th. This is what it looked like. It's on your screen right now, just a few weeks ago. And now, look at that. My goodness. <laughs> wow. Come on, give me a while. Wow. Oh boy. I have a question though. What's the question? What are those letters doing there? Like, on what the, does it spell? On the house? Yeah. They're decorations. Ray picked them out. It says home sweet home. Because is that not our home sweet home? It's our home sweet home. That's right. Look at that. Oh, what? I think What's I know. What's the bag doing here? I think I know where that came from. <laughs> yep. I definitely know where that came from. But now, we need a driveway. Like, uh an approach like a gravel bed leading up to our driveway approach now we just need uh, some base rock for a garage approach now the reason we left that tree right there that lone hickory tree is because they're very hardy and i gotta be honest we think it's cute we do we, we love it we thought we were going to lose it last night because the 80 mile an hour winds came straight from the west to right here but it looks pretty good it bent it down pretty good. It did. It folded it really well, but it handled it just fine. They have really good deep root systems. So we're very pleased. I couldn't get all the leaves out of my pool. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when Carter gets back, he'll get them. <laughs> I kind of feel like these two are selling Girl Scout cookies but they don't have any of the uh, chocolate mint ones or the Ritz peanut butter ones. So like nobody wants them. These are so good, baby. Silly. I moved their water trough, so it'll be cooler now. Sound good? Oh, you moved that one? Well, this over. is the one from over there. I noticed we took out some trees in case anybody didn't know. <laughs> We took out some trees over there and their water was more in the sun. So I moved it. Oh yeah, I gotcha. That's what. Yeah. And they seem to correct. From that side, just to right there. Correct. And they seem to like it better because now they're laying out there. You know, they never, they never hung out right here before. That's true. They always wanted that water back there. Right. Like literally <laughs> that one would get empty and this one would be full with fresh water and they wouldn't come up here. They'd never come up here. Yeah. Which I think well because they can lay beside it in the shade now. Right. It makes sense. For sure. Golly. I don't even know where to start. Wait till it's green. Oh, I know. it's going to be so pretty. So earlier in the video, I was trying to figure out, I was trying to show you guys which trees we're going to take out. We're going to pay to have these taken out. At least this one here. It is leaning. If a branch fell or if the tree was shoved that way by 80 mile an hour straight winds, I would think that it might have an issue. We'll see, but it, this one's coming out for sure. That one's coming out for sure. Those two are coming out for sure. So at least that's the plan right now. Mm -hmm. It could change tonight. That's true. We were kind of talking about the storm earlier when we were filming. And so we decided to leave Adler inside while we close this video out. Uh, but we did wind up in a hotel last night. We lost power for till four o'clock this morning. So from 745 ish, 745 PM till about four between, between four and five this morning, it came back yeah. on. So. We have all our smart devices. So like when they start connecting, it tells you on your phone. So I woke up at like five 30 and it had told me everything was connecting. So the crazy thing is the town we live in, we're outside of town. So we got power restored, but in town, they actually put out a statement that it's going to be a couple days before they get their power back um, because we lost almost every single power line, yep. like all the power poles. So everything. the way it was described to me once upon a time is where we're sitting, there's a 
power feed coming in this way and a power feed coming in this way and we're like teed off of it. So they're able to restore power to us from the opposite side, which is why when we left last night, everybody on that side of our street, our this main drag out here, they all had power. The guy at the end of the road had power, but nobody over here did. It's so. what, 4.30 in the afternoon right now? Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, some, there's some even surrounding towns um, that still don't have any. One thing that it did teach us I'm not trying to be like off grid. I'm not trying to have like a whole cabin in the woods with Wi-Fi, self-sufficient, drilling my own well with the witching sticks tomorrow. Solar Nothing. power, solar panels. And I, I'm not above it. <laughs> I'm not calling it out. I just, I don't have the whatever to jump into that right now. But we are talking to like Generac, Champion, about a whole home generator with the use of propane. Like last night we could have just left we could have used that whole home generator because thankfully our beef supply is actually pretty low. And somebody who you've known is on the menu is headed there in a week, not Frank. So eventually our beef would have been, you know, thousands of dollars worth of beef. Not that there's not several hundred in there, but thankfully it was just eight hours. So everything's okay. But, or at least that's what we told Case when he made tacos earlier. We'll find out later. Let me know down below what you guys use for the, the old whole home generator with the transfer switch, the auto switch. I would love to have that. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Sounds like an investment we definitely need being down this road. So. Uh, as far as dad goes, some positive updates today. He's still riding it out. But again, it's not, it's not anything that he can't overcome. It's just getting through those initial couple of weeks when he comes home. And of course you guys know he had to check himself back in and you know, but he's gonna be okay. And I I think there's a possibility he comes home. Do I jinx it? I don't think it's gonna be today, but possibly tomorrow. So if not, he's gonna blame me when he sees this later that I jinxed it. But we appreciate you guys' thoughts and prayers on that. And uh, that's it, you got anything to say? I don't mean to just ramble on, but we're extremely tired. I don't know what time you went to bed, but. It's after midnight, yeah. even Adler. So we're all like, meh, today. Yeah. We're, all, we're all whatever. <laughs> That's it. Y'all be good. Don't want too hard. Don't make it weird. God bless. Deuces. Thank y'all very much. Yeah.